Hi and welcome to this walkthrough for Cello Untamed which replaces the old walkthrough so if you've already seen one uh, then some of this is going to seem familiar to you but if you've not seen a walkthrough yet then stick around because I'm going to take you through the whole instrument, the articulation, the sounds, all the controls and that kind of stuff. So let's get into it. As with all of the other Untamed series strings the instrument is built around these improvisations, that's the whole heart of the instrument. And they're built up from three different velocity layers, playing three different intensities of performances, all recorded as really long notes and completely improvised. Every single note is unique compared to the next one. Uh, and within that note is three separate performances triggered by playing harder or softer on the keyboard. Uh, and then you've got two sets that we've recorded as well. So you've got over 200 improvised uh, performances to play with. Uh, so let's just take you through to A1 to begin with. That's the first set that opens up uh, and you'll hear what it sounds like. So these are the calm velocities to begin with. Play very gently on your keyboard and this is the kind of sound you're gonna get. So really gentle, like really flatando sounding, sort of like some harmonics creeping in there. Like just this really gentle sound. Now if I just play a little bit harder on my keyboard now, you're gonna trigger the next sort of like set of performances that we recorded. Uh, and this is what that sounds like. So much more like standard style of playing, just sort of like that it sounds much more like a natural cello that you would expect, but there's still loads of emotion in there. There's still like vibrato and sort of like natural ebbs and flows to those notes. So that's kind of like the, the, the default that you would probably naturally go to and when you would naturally play on the keyboard anyway. And then if we start hitting some notes really hard now, you're gonna trigger the sort of like the upper velocity uh, samples, which are much more wild, uh, much more crazy and kind of like uh, experimental. So let's just uh, see what those sound like. As you can hear sort of like much more emotion in there, much more sort of like big peaks and troughs of the performance of the natural dynamics that we recorded. Um, more interesting start points as well, you got some really interesting stuff. So where you just need to like accent a certain part of the performance, that's when you would trigger those higher velocities to get something really sort of like cutting uh, and in your face. It's really, really interesting. So with the improvisations, you've got two sets, A and B, and those are completely different samples from each other. They're new performances. Again, every single note is, is different to the last. And then within each one of those notes, you've got those three different layers of performances. And the difference is that with A2 and B2 is we've just chosen a new start time within that sample. So it feels like a new, uh, feels like a new sample and gives you just a, a different start and a different feeling to that uh, performance. Because the notes are quite long, some of them are 20, 25 seconds long, they're continually changing and developing throughout the whole performance of that note. 
is that you're getting something new uh, within those samples. So it's quite nice to have those extra sort of start times just to give you some more variation. So if I play A1 first and then A2, you'll just get an idea of, of what that sounds like. Sounds familiar, sounds the same, but it's not exactly the same sort of like start time, so it feels like a different performance. And then B1 and B2, I'll play exactly the same melody. It just sounds a little bit different and stops your ears coming tired. And then that's where you've got these improvisations round robin at the end, which is basically going to cycle through those four sets. So if you've got a repeating phrase like that, then it's not going to trigger the same sample every single time, and it's just going to make the performance seem a little bit more realistic and a bit more lively. So that, if you've got a repeating phrase that you're playing or a melody that's kind of like, you know, repeating itself over and over again, use the improvisations around Robin and that will just keep your ear engaged and a bit more, uh, just give it something new to listen to. So I'm going to play some of these other uh, improvisations now just so you've got an idea of what they sound like over the keyboard. Uh, and I'm going to play sort of like gently and loud at the same time so you get an idea of how they can be used actually just by playing them and not having to program in any, any you know, mod wheel or dynamics data just by playing louder and softer on the keyboard. sort of like playing louder and softer you're getting some completely different performances and you're just feeling your way through the performance as well when you want something more emotional more passionate and more like sort of like dynamic then hit the keyboard harder and that's what you're going to get uh, the other cool thing to do with these is just to layer them up so you just hold down shift and click any of these articulations on the interface and you'll be able to play th those together so two together is nice to sound a bit more fuller and richer and then if you trigger all four at once really sounds like there's four different cellos playing all at the same time. So Storm's Next, which is a really interesting articulation to play, it basically takes all the improvisations that we recorded and layers them up gradually throughout the course of the mod wheel. You need the mod wheel to use this. And basically, at the very bottom of the mod wheel, there's one calm performance, just one single calm performance playing. And then throughout the course of the mod wheel, it's adding more and more of those improvisations until at the very top of the mod wheel, it's playing everything. So all of the wild layers, all of the lively layers, and all of the calm layers all together. So if I just play a single note now. So 
so you can hear it starting to get thicker and more angry as you push that mod wheel up. If I just play a little uh, piece now so you can sort of understand it a bit more in context. So it's just a really interesting articulation to play. There's something about the, the fact that you're playing one cello on its own, just all calm, and then building up to all of those cellos, just playing something different, uh, you know, something wild, something lively, something calm, all together, all doing their own thing, and your ears just going like, what's going on at the top layer? There's just so much going on that it's just, it's just a really fun thing to play, as well as you'll, you'll be able to come up with some ideas that suddenly you'll be like, okay, that's where I can fit that in, or it's gonna spin you off onto an idea as like, right, this is the foundation of what I'm gonna write, and then you're gonna build it around this articulation. So it's just such a fun thing uh, to have in your arsenal. So onto the more traditional articulations along the bottom, starting off with just normale, which is just like kind of standard long notes. And you've got vibrato control included as well, so you can have it completely non-vib. It's quite a gradual vibrato as well, so it doesn't just kick in straight away, it sort of like naturally builds into that rich vibrato that we've got. Uh, flautando as well. really soft and gentle. I think that sounds woody. I think that the cello that Polly was playing is almost built for that articulation. It just sounds absolutely fantastic. Uh, then we've got two versions of Solpont. There's a soft one, and then there's an even more sort of like uh, gritty hard one. Uh, so the soft one first. Uh, so that's Solpont soft, and then we've got this grit one as well, which is even more aggressive. So much more intense, much more of a cutting, gritty, aggressive sound. And you can hear some of that natural phasing that's starting to occur as well when you're, you're playing a cello in that way. Uh, this, this weird sort of like harmonic uh, phasing starts to come out and it's a really, really cool sound. I absolutely love it. So tremolo next. And that's such a tense sound at the bottom there. It gets a bit faster and a bit more frantic towards the top end as you naturally ride through those dynamics. And there's also like a, a really nice off sound to the note as well. When we were recording these, we got Polly to perform a bit more of like an actual performed end to the note rather than just, you know, if you play tremolo, typically you can just stop the note and the whole thing dies down. But with these, you can hear it here. There's like a, a, a much more of like a performed ending to the note. So you can hear there, it's like a, it's like a stop to the end of the note. So it kind of like accents the, the end of the performance. So it's just really cool that we've got that. 
So circular bowing next, which you've also got on the violin and the viola, but I think it sounds really different on the cello. And for those of you that don't know, it's basically like that kind of motion on the strings. So you're getting like this swishing sound effect at the same time as like no, the, the note coming in and out as well as, as you know, the bow resonates with the string. So this is what it sounds like. <laughs> So you can hear there it's quite a, like a, a dynamic sound and you're getting that, that swishing sound effect as well as the note sort of like randomly coming in and out as the, as the bow sort of like striking the string more and more. Uh, and it gets more, f it gets faster and more frantic and a, a bit more aggressive as you hit the top of the mod wheel and it's much more gentler at the bottom as the, as the two samples crossfade between each other. And what you'll find with this circular bowing, especially more on the cello than on the other two, is that it's quite a dynamic signal. Like we, we didn't compress this signal at all, we've left it quite raw. Basically, to, so you can make that decision. I like it like this. And I think if you compress that signal too much, it starts to become a bit too flat. And the, 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 the interesting thing about this sound is, is that it's kind of like a bit more jumpy and a bit more interesting to listen to. So that's why you, you, you might, hear this articulation and think, oh, what's going on there? And that's what it is. But if you don't like that and you want to tame that signal a bit more and can control it, then use a compressor and it will obviously bring the, the peaks down, bring the troughs up and then level out that signal. So I'll leave that down to you. Then full harmonics next, which you've got quite a, a decent range to play with on the cello. Really nice flute-like sound to that uh, articulation. It's really great. It sounds great on the cello as well. So onto the two short articulations we've got next. And Spiccato first is one of my favorite articulations we've recorded across the whole series. On the cello, I think it sounds absolutely brilliant. There's something really dynamic we've recorded. I think it's just the, the natural sound of the cello, what you can achieve on that compared to the others, between really soft and then really being able to dig in to those notes is, is really, really nice. dynamic, really cool to listen to, really fun to play as well. Really cool. Then we've got Pizzicato. So you've got exactly the same kind of dynamics as spiccato articulation, really, really gentle playing up to a bit more like percussive sound. You've also got a Bartok uh, pizzicato at the top. Really like snappy sound effect. So with the two short note articulations, you've got these controls up here, which affect how the sound actually sounds, how it performs. You've got attack, tightness, and release. And attack is obviously how quickly that note reaches its full volume. So you can make it sound a bit more softer. 
tightness is actually cutting in to the front end of the sample so it's actually taking away parts of the parts of the sample at the front end you can kind of like lose the transient of the sound so if you wanted to make it like a really tight sound compared to that kind of thing and then you've also got release as well uh, which is quite useful really on the on the spiccato I'll keep it on you can make it like a really tight if you've got like a particular like fast passage of music it kind of like cuts into that end of the sample and like brings it brings it a lot more more realistic to how it would be but then if you also like hold the note down it still plays the full release of the sample so you get much more of like a realistic sense of what the performance would be so don't forget that even if that release is down if you hold the note down or, or play the note in for a longer length of time you'll still get that full release so you don't have to worry about programming that release control at the same time so onto the glue layers next which is basically a sine wave recorded to tape and it's there as a trick that a lot of people use to basically fill in the bottom end of the signal of a, of a string section so you can use trigger these with any of the articulations but basically all you do is hold down shift to trigger as many of them as you want so let's just choose a few and then we've got this glue there and then you've got all of these controls to affect how the glue sounds so it's playing exactly that this one here is playing exactly the same pitch as the note that you're playing. So you might not be able to hear it, but I think that is exactly the point that they're supposed to be used for, is that they fill in the sound and make it a lot richer and a lot deeper, but you don't necessarily know that it's there. So if I take it away during that performance, you can kind of feel that it's gone and that's exactly how I like to use them. You've got these other controls as well, like uh, low pass filter if you wanted to take off the top end, uh, grit filter just to make it a bit more like uh, in your face. And then the attack and release of that sound, as well as this pulse control, which I find really useful, which just adds like this natural sort of like pulsating sound. And you can sync that to uh, to your door. Just so it creates a bit more of like a, a natural ebb and flow to it. And then you've got this glue 8VB, so if I trigger that as well, and that's playing the same sine wave, but a, an octave lower. So it's much, much deeper and richer sound. Just take the volume down a little bit, otherwise it might be a bit too loud. this signal this whole bottom end uh, that wasn't there before uh, so it's really really cool thing to add so if I just trigger the glue 8VB and just one of the improvisations you'll really be able to hear what's going on way too much for, in my opinion anyway but it's there that if you wanted to use it you can just use it on its own if you wanted to if you just needed to play that kind of thing so the idea there is you just put them under one of your existing articulations just to fill in the bottom end but not to the point that you'd be able to hear it but if you took it away you would know that it's gone that's the way I like to use them but you do exactly what you want with them 
So microphone positions next, and I've chosen Spiccato because that does the best job of showing off uh, the microphone positions. I've got no reverb turned on at all. There's no processing on this video whatsoever, so you are listening to exactly what the sound sounds like. And then we'll choose spot first. And then close. And the difference between the spot and the close is much more pronounced on the cello and the bass than it is on the violin and the viola, purely because of the physical distance that the microphones are allowed to be. And also with the violin and the viola, you know, those, those performers need a bit more room to manoeuvre and a bit more, you know, like uh, space to operate in. Whereas the, viola, uh, the cello and the bass being sat down, you can get the microphone much, much closer to the F-holes. So you can, the, the difference in sound between the spot and the close on the cello, I think sounds much more pronounced than any of the other instruments. So if I just play back to back. spot is really dry and really close and hyper detailed. It's a U47 microphone, really well paired microphone to the sound of the cello uh, and the close being a KM184 is like a classic uh, small condenser microphone quite you know overhead of the cello. It's you know it's a really really good pairing to blend those two together. <laughs> Uh, and then onto the room and gallery microphones next. So the room's much, much further back and then the galleries are all the way up in the ceiling of the recording studio. And then the galleries. So the galleries you probably wouldn't use much on their own. It's much better to blend those two microphone positions uh, in with these uh, other microphones as well. So there's no right or wrong answer to this. It's just like whatever suits your personal preference. Something like that sounds pretty good. like a natural room sound, natural reverb sound, the tail sounds nice uh, and natural. That I think that to me is, is like a good combination. If you just wanted to make the cello sound like it's in a you know proper recording environment, that's the one to go for. If you wanted it to sound really ultra detailed, really precise, really dry, put the spot all the way to the ceiling and then maybe add a bit of the closed microphone in and that's where that's where you'll be happy. And then you've obviously got reverb, do whatever you want with it afterwards. So just before uh, we end, I just want to talk about some of the layering of the articulations uh, because that's where some of the really interesting stuff starts to happen. Uh, I mean, I've, we've, we've already looked at layering up the improvisation articulations, but adding some more of these uh, together is where stuff starts to sound really good. So let's just choose a couple of the improvisations, uh, one of the glue layers, uh, flatando, and then maybe tremolo as well and see what this sounds like. some really interesting textures that you won't have heard before so let's try circular and tremolo work together quite nicely on their own. Uh, and then also try uh, like circular and then a couple of these improvisations and then maybe let's go for solpont as well. And then 
another one that I really like at the moment is Storms and Tremolo and then the Glues as well. Because all of those sounds kind of like feel like they're together. good like you know if you want to accentuate the storms and get some real depth and body going in there that combination I found is is one of my favorites as well uh, so that's it like experiment with those articulations and, and putting some together and then if you want even more control obviously you can split them up in your tracks and your door and start panning them and you know affecting the volumes and all those kind of things uh, but just to get you started and to get some sort of like you know inspiration going like you know what what sounds have I never heard before let's try and come up with a, a unique sound for this particular you know score or piece of music that you're trying to create then just quickly you can work around and come up with something that's you know you won't have heard before. So that's it from me. If there's something really specific you want to know or something you really want to dive deep on the detail on, then let us know in the comments and we'll get back to you as soon as I can. But I'm really pleased we've done the uh, updated walkthrough for the update of the cello because the between now and the original release of the cello, there's loads more features and a lot more functionality that we've added uh, to make this instrument really stand out. And lots of you have been asking, like, can we see what this thing is capable of? Can you give us a new walkthrough? Well, here it is. Uh, and I hope you've enjoyed it. So apart from that, hope you're all well. Uh, we'll see you on the next one. Take care.